segment of Food for Thought. My name is Sandy Thomas. Regrettably, Marietta Nader is not with us today. She's out on another hot assignment for <laughs> Cable 7 in Upper St. Clair. Um, we're here today at the Boyce Middle School Family and Consumer, Consumer Sciences. Sciences Classroom with Mrs. Viv Kreiner. Um, we've enticed Viv to return to do another cooking show with us. Um, Today we're going to also work from the Upper St. Clair Cookbook Flavors, which was published in November of, of 2002. Mm -hmm. And today we'll be in the brunch and bread chapter. And Viv mm -hmm. has planned a real special brunch that would be great for Mother's Day, great for a special birthday or any family event or company. Or uh, it's, okay. it's an easy menu and I'm sure you'll all enjoy it. We'd like to thank Mrs. Karen Brown, the principal of Boyce Middle School, for permitting us to come today, and of course, Mr. Bill and Art, the custodians, and they've been so helpful. We have um, Glenn Ward with us, behind the scenes, our technical support. Thank you, and let's get started. What okay. have you planned? Well, we're going to start off with an easy breakfast strata that's in the recipe book from Dinah Fulmer, who's one of our school board members. We're going to have a cinnamon fluff, which is from Peg Marks, and then we're going to do a breakfast shake. Who's led by? Um, Deborah Waller. Deborah Mrs. Waller, Waller, right. Our so. um, fire marshal, I think. Okay, good. Here in Upper St. Clair. Good. So this brunch needs to be started the night before. And it's great if you're going to have company because the morning of, all you do is put it in the oven and you're there. So, we'll get started. Uh, first thing I'd like to do is cube some bread. We need 10 slices of bread cubed. I have a few done already, but I wanted to demonstrate for you how we go about cubing bread. I assume uh, this is a, an ordinary bread right. in a cellophane I, bag. Right. I just got mm -hmm. an ordinary white bread, although you could probably use a French bread or an Italian bread. Okay. That would be great. Okay. But not raisin bread or... Not for this not one. Okay. Some of them, A nice yes. white bread. A nice white bread. Okay. I have a serrated bread knife here. It doesn't have to be necessarily the long, thin bread knife, but you do need the little teeth serrated edge to cut your bread so you don't smash it. I'm going to let the weight of the knife do the work, and all I'm going to do is saw. And I'm actually going to cut this into four columns, three cups. And then we're going to turn it around and do the same this way. I'm going to hold these together and just let the knife do the work. All I'm doing is moving it back and forth. And one more saw and we're good. Notice I didn't squish the bread. If you press down too hard, you'll squish the bread. And we don't want a dough one. ball. Right. Okay. So I'm going to add this here. We got our 10 cups going. Mm -hmm. And now I believe we can start to brown the sausage. I am going to use a pound tube of loose sausage. And I'm a very big fingers on, hands on cook. So I have a hard time breaking sausage up. If I put this whole wad in there, some people like to use their pancake turner or whatever. I'm going to squeeze this out like toothpaste, and I'm going to use my fingers and That's neat. break little pieces off and put it into my pan. I can actually go ahead and turn this pan on to, we're going to start with seven. Medium oh. high. Well, be careful, that's Sorry. on wheels. <laughs> I guess I can't. I forgot leave. to warn you. I can't leave. Oh, my students do that all the time. It's okay. I tell them. On the first day, be careful. Well, I, have, I have hot things, okay. sharp things, and things on wheels that you and, wouldn't expect and moving to move. Things. Right. Now, this isn't an Italian sausage. You wouldn't use a spicy Italian sausage or a kielbasa or. Do you or know? That. For I'm, breakfast, I'm, I'm into just a normal breakfast sausage. A bulk sausage. Right. Mm -hmm. This um, has some vegetables in it. The recipe we're using today. I actually had a brunch over the holidays last year. And you'll love this. I did, I had 50 people, and I did three different egg dishes. The morning one was just an eggs and cheese, and then we went to one with sausage and cheese, and then we went to one with a lot of vegetables. So it was oh. more of a lunchy mm -hmm, mm -hmm. one. And depending what time you came over to my house, I think my parents were the only ones that were there for the time. And tasted everything. So that's another day. More recipes. 
But and it's important to cook thoroughly cooked sausage. Absolutely. No pink left no at, pink at all. all. Okay. So we're almost done here. And it's also important to clean utensils after you've had the raw meat right. in right. contact with them. That's why I do it like this. I don't have a cutting board I have mm -hmm. to deal with. Mm -hmm. I don't have a knife I have to deal with. All I have to deal with with the raw sausage are my fingers. And I have a little trick to washing those, too, I'm going to share oh, with you. Okay. In just a minute. Let me make sure I got all of this out. And this was a pound, I believe. Yes, it was. Of the bulk A pound sausage. of bulk sausage. So. I hear it sizzling. From there, yes. Now, I have found that just using a regular soap on a greasy whatever doesn't always work. So no. I'm going to go ahead and squirt a little bit of a dishwashing liquid that I would wash my dishes in on my fingertips and scrub them up. So oh, I'll okay. be right back. Okay. I don't know if I'll you're going to get me do this or not. This is a fabulous room. Um, I see sewing machines. I see several sinks. I haven't counted them. Um, <laughs> several stoves, microwaves, you have blenders, um, refrigerators. It's a beautiful, beautiful room. And I'm sure lots of special things happen here. I, I even see some uh, laundry, yes. little laundry facility Definitely. here. So I'm sure these well, fifth and sixth graders learn a lot. They and have do. a good time with it. We do. We, um, this is my second year that I've been here. and. After inventorying everything, I can honestly say I think I'm using just about everything that is available great, here great. into the What types of food curriculum. do they do? We do um, pizzas, snacks, an egg breakfast dish. Mm -hmm. I try and use the top of the stove, the oven. Mm -hmm. We have blenders, which we're going to use later today, and I have the kids using those. And then we got new sewing machines last year, and so all the six-level kids are into the sewing machines. And what and do they make? What, what right now we're doing do they make? drawstring bags. Oh, that's useful. And they can choose the size. So they could do a laundry bag or right? maybe a, a little bag for A little gym bag clothes. for their gym clothes mm -hmm. or to go overnight to a friend's. Great. And oh, I feel good because I see them in the hall with them, so that's, oh, well, that's great. A good, that's a good in indication that it's a, a useful project. Right. I assume they get to select the fabric. Yes, we do. The so. whole consumerism bit about how you make consumer choices and what to oh. do when you go to the you store. Labels and, we yeah. read labels oh, in the good. food classes. Okay. It's lots of fun. That's great. What's so, next now? We're going to go ahead now and do the eggs. And let me get rid of this cutting board. I think can we'll I just tie it over sausage? here. Sure, if you'd okay. like to go ahead I'll and make that. sure that's browning. Shall I smash it down or leave it in, in the chunks? You can what would you smash like? it a little bit. Okay. Make the chunks a little smaller. But we're going to go ahead and crack eggs. And the standard way to crack an egg, I say there are two categories. You're either a bowl cracker or a counter cracker. I happen to be a counter cracker, so I'm going to go ahead and crack. Put my thumbs in the crack and pull apart, and that will break the egg. I actually need eight, but I also thought it would be fun to show you how to crack an egg with one hand. And when you do that, you crack, and you take your thumb and make it go forward, and your fingers and make it go backwards with the crack down below. So the like egg that. is cracked first a right. little bit, a on, little the bit on the, the edge counter. Okay, and you that's go from there. the trick. I didn't realize that. And this is a good dish to practice, because if you break the yolk, it won't matter. So, I'm doing pretty good here. But Sandy, I understand you have another way to crack I have, an egg. I learned, I learned another way from Cindy Scott. Do you want to show? She, okay. She, for lots of eggs, Cindy takes two eggs, knocks them together. Go for it. Only one will crack. The other one does not. And then, of course, you can break the egg open. And go from there. And then keep working with your other eggs. So, Should I try that I'm on TV? Go ahead. Give it a try. I bet only okay. one egg will crack. Okay. Unless, of course, Viv, if you go ba-boom. Well, you never we'll know. We'll have a mess. But my I'm going to rinse my hands. Go Wash ahead. my hands. Excuse me. I'm not rinsing until I'm done. All I right. have a raw egg on them. Now, I've never done this before. So, take this. I'm going to go like this. Whew. It worked. It did. So then I can just go like this. Now, see, the advantage of doing it this way is she's not dripping anywhere. Where when I'm doing it, I'm dripping from here over to here sometimes. 
Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. I need two more. I just want it. Hey! Okay. Let me see. Why is it always the one in my left hand that's counting? I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to do this in the real way. How many will this feed? This, I would this, say this would serve. feed 12 people. Okay. And I'm just going to get rid of this. And it must be done the night before. Yes, must or be done I the night before. at least six hours before. It needs to right, set it needs in the to set set refrigerator. Yes. It's an overnight breakfast. Okay. We're going to go ahead and beat these eggs with the wire whisk. And even though I was perfect and we didn't break any yolks, and neither did Sandy, we're going to go ahead and break them now. And when you use a wire whisk, I'm doing a circle motion, but very quickly. And I have enough in here that I don't have to tilt, although sometimes I like to tilt. Would you want to use a, 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 an electric mixer to we do could. this? We could. We could use an electric mixer Would if you wanted. Would it pop it up too much? Nah, I don't no? think so. Okay. Just so you knew when to stop. I like to stop when I have a little layer of bubbles on the top and I can't see big hunks of white. There's a little bit of hunks of white still in here. Let me go for a few more minutes. Do you think it matters what size egg to use? You know what? Most recipes are made for large eggs, mm -hmm. and so that's what we use most of the time. If you use, for eight eggs, Nah, you could use extra large okay. ones, okay? okay? If you were using a really odd grade, if you had your own chickens or something, then I think you'd have to adjust. Okay. But okay. I feel good. I don't think any of us have our own chickens in Upper St. Clair. This is true. I forgot that, this is that I know about. Do you know what? I have a know. really good friend that lives in Stanton Heights, and there's a farm in the middle of her neighborhood, and she gets real oh, eggs from that's there. That's neat. That's neat. So. All right, we're going to add all of the remaining ingredients to this. Three cups of milk is the first thing I need. Here's my container. Now, when you measure liquid, it's important that you use a liquid measuring cup. The cup stays on the flat surface and you get down to the level of the cup so that you measure accurately. And I'm going to put the line that's on the top of the milk right on the three cup mark, which will go like that. Bubbles don't count. So if you have bubbles, the bubbles will be floating on your line. I'm going to go ahead and add the milk here and stir this in. Oh, my next couple of ingredients, cheddar cheese, fresh mushrooms, and asparagus. I'm going to hold on for a minute because as I look at the list, I have dry mustard, dry basil, flour, and salt. And I have found that sometimes when you have to add those dry ingredients to eggs, they stay in clumps. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. I'm going to mix those dry ingredients, excuse me one okay. second, and go from there. I have a tablespoon of dry mustard, which comes in a little container like this in your spice section. I have two teaspoons of dried basil, which I'm going to go ahead and put in there. I also need one teaspoon of salt. Excuse me one second. I'm back. And I'm going to measure a teaspoon of salt over a piece of wax paper so I don't spill. Get my piece of wax paper. I try to make cleanup as easy on myself as I can, especially for you moms out there when I send my students into your kitchens to cook. I don't want you to have fears that they're going to leave a big mess. So. Fill this up a little over full. I'm going to take a spatula and do my little choppy choppy across and smoothie it twice and add the salt. And then the last thing I need is flour. Two tablespoons of flour. I'll be right back okay. with the flour. I think the sausage is almost done. Good. I don't see any pink. Okay. And, and will we drain it? Do you know what I will do? Do you know what? The brand I buy, I think, has very little it, it does. grease. I'm not sure and what I'm, would be drained off. I'm very pleased with it. What I would do is find the biggest hunk you can, break it in half, and make sure there's no pink. Okay. And that would be my indication that okay. we're really there. And while you're checking that out, I'm going to go it ahead and do pretty good. my two tablespoons of flour. Notice I'm just going to stir the flour up so it's nice and light and fill it up over full, choppy, choppy, 
and smooth it twice. It's almost a rhyme. I know. It's easy to remember. That's why I do it, so that my students will remember. I bet we're going to have some great cooks in the future in Upper St. Clair. I think so. And I'm going to go ahead a and stir here. all these dry ingredients together. Well, you know, my theory on cooking and actually and everything that I teach is maybe some people will use it as their career, and maybe some people will use it just as a hobby. For me, it's a stress release as well mm -hmm. as my career. Mm -hmm. so. It works out nicely. If you can see here, it is. I it's am blended. Yeah, blending it together, mm -hmm. and I'm using the back of the spoon, especially the dry mustard. It tends to mm -hmm. kind of smash together. Now, did this call for sifted flour? No, then it did not. I, I, I have learned that if the recipe says one cup of sifted flour, then you sift the flour. Mm -hmm. If the recipe should say one cup of flour, then just put in one cup of flour without sifting it. Right. And, and, and hopefully when recipes are written that that, uh, that important feature right. is, is included. That where the word sifted is mm -hmm. in the directions is really mm -hmm. important. Okay, I'm going to go ahead now and add all these dry things and whisk them away until the powder is not floating on top anymore. I want to say, hey Glenn, am I standing okay? Is this working out? Good. He says good. We're good. Okay, then we seem to be pretty much okay. And I'm sure the sausage is done. I have okay. checked. The large lumps, the small uh, lumps. We're good. We're, and I've turned it on low. Uh, good. We'll just keep it right there for a minute. We're going to go ahead and add to this two cups of shredded cheese, cheddar, and I just buy the two cup bag when I know I need to do this, make my life easy, dump the whole bag in. Mm -hmm. Two cups of fresh mushrooms, that's eight ounces, same deal. One container, dump that right in. And I buy the already sliced ones if I'm in a hurry, and that saves me some time. I'll take that. Oh, you will. Thank you. Good. Okay. Um, asparagus time. All right. There they are. Now, were That's these fresh? Actually, no. The recipe oh. calls for one package of frozen cut asparagus. Oh, okay. Let's have that cutting board that mm -hmm. this was sitting on, and I'm going to go ahead and cut these. All I did was, when I came home from the grocery store, I just put the box into my refrigerator and let them thaw out. And here they are. There is no reason why you could not use a fresh asparagus. Mm -hmm. I would cook them a little bit, though. Steam them. Steam them. Slightly. Mm -hmm. them. Okay. And I'm just going to go ahead and, I don't know, that's a little bread. That won't hurt us. And it says cut asparagus, and I could not find cut at our local grocery store, so I'm going to cut it myself mm -hmm. into, what do you think? like about one an inch, inch, I think. Okay. Almost bite size. Right. And we'll go ahead and load those in here. And let me just check my recipe, make sure I've got everything, just the sausage and the bread, and we're good. So let's go ahead and we'll add this. If you found there was a lot of grease in your sausage, I would drain it on a paper towel and press it and get any of the grease out that we needed to. I'm impressed. This has such a small amount of grease. I don't even think there's a yeah. teaspoon there. Am I allowed oh, to endorse good. the product? <laughs> that's the kind of sausage I use all the time. It's good. That's good. Um, I think it's a I good I did sign. an experiment with my students when I taught at Charval. We made an egg and sausage casserole, and I thought I'd use the low-fat cheese, mm -hmm. the egg beaters, mm -hmm. and the turkey sausage. And there was way more fat oh. on the turkey oh, sausage that's interesting. than there was on this particular kind oh, that I used. So, yeah, it was very interesting. It was an eye opener for all of us. Mm -hmm. I like this classroom. recipe because it does have the asparagus in it. Mm -hmm. That has something a little different. We have a couple of nice breakfast recipes. Um, one yes. has crab meat, and we have a couple <laughs> of great French toast uh, recipes that must be done the night before. I would love to do a French toast at another yeah. date. We could that do all French good. toast. Blueberry, mm. the blueberry, and there's an apple cinnamon that sound great. Right. Now, Dinah, I'm taking a little liberty here with your recipe. When I do egg casseroles, I always spray a little release spray in the pan so that if we're serving, it comes out easily. Mm -hmm. Especially if you're on a buffet kind of deal. Right, right. So I, I'm sure it looks neater also. Right. And 
if I add all of this into here, my bowl is going to be very full. So what I did when I practiced and it worked out quite well, and I'm going to do again, is I'm going to go ahead and put my breadcrumbs right here into my 9 by 13 greased pan. And then I'm going to spoon the casserole, eggs, etc., with my large metal spoon, hmm. which I am looking for. There it is. Right over that, I'm going to put them real close together so if I drip, I don't have to worry. And we'll go basically for the solid ingredients and we'll spread them all around. And ooh, there's a big hunk of cheese. Na, na, na. The sausage smells so good. I bet this will smell wonderful baking in the morning. Uh, my daughter was dying to have a piece, but I, she left for school. <laughs> you know, those high school kids, they leave at mm -hmm. 7, and I didn't have to leave for work until quarter to 8, and it wasn't going to be done until 7.30, so I tempted her, but she did not get But I know I'll be making this at home again very soon. It, it was popular with our committee, the Women oh. of Wednesday. We yes. love this recipe. We uh. loved the several that Dinah submitted. Dinah was mm -hmm. very generous, and... Um, contributing recipes and I understand that she had a catering business several years oh, wow. ago. Um, I didn't know so that. So her recipes turned out to be quite special and That's we were great. reviewed in the Post Gazette and they selected her um, mm -hmm. carrot soup which mm -hmm. is in our, our soup chapter. The review is on the side of my refrigerator oh, in the back here. Okay. I treat my classroom just like my house. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and stir this up a little bit so that the bread isn't all on the bottom. And then mm -hmm. I'm going to go ahead and pour. And sorry, Gwen, I'm pouring with the bowl in front. Maybe you can check this out from the back. I'm not sure. <laughs> that was easy. Yep. Fairly easy. And yeah, we're looking good. Now, what you do with this is you cover it up and leave it in your refrigerator overnight. And the next morning, Turn your oven on to 350 and let it bake for between an hour and 70 minutes. Easy. Uh, all right. Easy. We'll be back in a minute right. for the second segment with the next food, which is cinnamon fluff. Well, we're back and we have in the refrigerator overnight the breakfast, easy breakfast strata, Dinah Fulmer's recipe that um, Viv just finished. And we're <laughs> going to start on the cinnamon fluff. Viv forgot to talk about um, a, 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 an encounter with right. Dinah at Piccolina's restaurant recently. Right. Actually, it was um, the night of the play when we were going to the high school play, Les Mis, and I was having dinner there and had been perusing the cookbook trying to figure out what I was going to make for brunch, and I had decided on Dinah's Easy Breakfast Strata, and lo and behold, there she was having dinner. So I went over and introduced myself and asked her if she would mind, and she said, no, not at all. So here we are. Very good. But now we're going to do the cinnamon fluff. And uh, what is that? Is it a, is it a cupcake or a? Well, like a coffee cake in an 8 by 8 inch pan. Okay. And it's from Peg. Peg Marks. Talk about Peg. And Peg is um, the grandmother of Greg and um, Brian. Greg's in 11th grade, and Brian is in 8th grade here in Upper St. Yeah. Clair. And they, um, I don't think Peg lives in Upper St. Clair, but she was kind enough to donate a recipe That's great. To, to our cookbook, and it's turned out to be a very special recipe. And I mm -hmm. believe it was her grandmother's. Wow. From down south, um, growing up in the south, as, as I remember correctly. So I'll be anxious oh. to try it. Good. Oh, what I'm doing here is I'm going to measure the first ingredient, which is the two cups of flour. I have a special two-cup dry measuring cup that I bought for myself at Williams-Sonoma, oh. and I absolutely love it. Do you have one of these No, yet? I don't. Oh. A dry so measure for two for cups. For two cups. It and saves time. Absolutely. And I've filled it up over full using a spoon. Remember, never scoop flour because you're going to put too much flour in there. You always want to spoon it in. And I'm going to choppy choppy across to get any little air pockets out of there. And then I'm going to smoothie it twice. And I'm going to go Do ahead and add that to my bowl. Do you think it's important to keep these dry ingredients in a glass container? Or, or is it OK to keep them in the bag they came in? Do you know what? What I do have you think? 
some, my canisters at home are smaller, and so I have mine in the bag, in a plastic grocery store bag tied, because I go through them quite uh -huh, often. Uh -huh. So I don't feel the need. Some people refrigerate their flowers. Right, right. And that's okay To keep too. the little bugs out. I, right, yes. right. Okay, the first six ingredients, the directions say I need to sift these first six. Two cups of flour, two teaspoons of baking powder, which remember the baking powder is the leavening agent in the can and not in the box. I'm going to go ahead and add that here. The half a teaspoon of salt. Ching, I'm feeling like emerald. Mm. <laughs> um, a cup of sugar, which I did spoon in choppy smoothie, just like I did the flour. And this is white granulated sugar. Right. It said mm -hmm. you could use brown if you wanted, but I thought mm. the white would be better in the cake because I'm going to put the brown as the okay. topping, and that will be okay. good. A teaspoon of nutmeg and a teaspoon of cinnamon. Mm. One, two, three, four, five, six. We got them all in here. Now, Peg's recipe says we're going to sift this, but I'm going to be very honest. And it's just coffee cake, and I don't feel the urge to sift. So I'm just going to combine all these ingredients, and that part is really important. When my husband cooks, which is very rare, he never combines, and when I get the pancake from him. I get the one with all the baking powder or the baking oh, soda in it. In one, in one, in one spoonful. One spoonful, and mm -hmm. it's pretty nasty. See how you can still see the dark brown streaks mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. the cinnamon and nutmeg? I'm going to take some time here and really stir this up so that I don't see and of course, any if more you streaks. had sifted this, that right. might have made this right. a little different. Yes, it would have. But rather than okay. go through the aggravation, I'm going to stir. And I'm fluffing it together lightly letting air in. Sometimes when I have an electric mixer and it says to sift, I put the dry ingredients on and turn the mixer on a little bit mm -hmm. and let, let it sift. But here's the word about sifting. If the ingredient says two cups sifted flour, you need to sift the flour and then measure. If it oh. says two cups flour sifted, that's what I'm doing here. Okay. And that it says okay. here two cups of flour, which I have the right amount in. So <laughs> take it literally. Right. Right. A, a well-written recipe. Yes. Will will be specific. I demonstrate to my students what happens when you sift and then I condense the flour back down mm -hmm. because you're mm -hmm. adding air to it whenever you're sifting it. Mm. But here we're just combining it up. So. And you've made a well. I've made a well. Yes. This is an old old. I'm dating myself here, and you knew what it was, so you're right there with me. Um, it's a method of mix making a quick bread. And I'm making a little well in the middle, and I'm going to put my liquid ingredients in there. Oh, no, I forgot. Whoops. I have to blend in my shortening. Two oh. tablespoons of shortening. And now I'm going is to this, um, we'll use a, a label, a, a brand label, a Crisco or this, Fluffo this is, or right, um, right. a it's, solid. You wouldn't use a vegetable oil. No, mm -hmm. not here. Would you use margarine or butter if it said shortening? Um, you could. I okay. would go there way before I would go with the oil. Okay. Okay. That would work too. I'm going to go ahead and use a pastry blender, mm -hmm. which some people think is a meat tenderizer. I've had <laughs> lots of fun questions it with look what is that enough is to be a meat tenderizer. Do you want to laugh? Okay. I found one of these. We just used all the pastry blenders last week for Middle Ages Day here at Boyce, mm -hmm. and I needed four of them because I gave every child a handle on experience and one of them were broken. Oh, I have no idea what, what somebody, <laughs> it was broken in the drawer. I don't oh know my. what somebody had done with them because I did just purchase them last year. Mm. But lots of people use my classroom and things happen and well, that's maybe fine. So. You know, maybe one of the kids were goofing around but I think I would have heard somebody mm -hmm. break the pastry blender. Maybe it got shut in the drawer. Maybe. We don't know. Well, it wasn't All a terribly part of the expensive job. piece of no. equipment. Pastry no. the blenders are not. And, right. And, and uh, I'll be honest, they're easily replaced. Right. Here at school, I don't buy the extremely expensive equipment because we do a lot of dropping and mm -hmm. breaking mm -hmm. and whatever, and that's well, all hundreds, part of learning. Hundreds of students handle these things yes. each yes. week. Um, and, and this room is immaculate. It and, is. Oh, thank it you. It looks wonderful. And I'm not beyond dropping or spilling or breaking yeah. either, so. Right. I'm. I have worked this in so that, at best, I might see a little piece that looks okay. like the size of a pea, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but we're good with that. And now, I'm going to make the well. Oh, okay. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, into the well, we need 
one egg and three fourths cup of milk and one teaspoon of vanilla. Can so I get the egg for you? That Do would you be great. You know what? I think I put the egg back in the fridge. I think I put it in the oh, fridge. Okay. We'll need to get that. And I need another bowl. Ta ta. And three fourths cup of milk. There's my measuring cup Just over one here. Egg? Just one egg. So, would you like to crack the egg in the bowl? <sighs> Which way shall we do it? We I'll do it the one. safe way. There. Good. I'm not ready for a one-handed right. break. That's all right. On television. And I'm gonna go <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and I'll just beat this up with the fork. That's right. I want to figure out with the two egg thing if I can get the other egg cracked. <laughs> I won't do that on TV. We'll save that for my kitchen oh. with Some my family. Some poor mom's going to come home someday and a whole dozen eggs will have been lost to the adventures True. of egg breaking. Yes. I think thing. we'll hear about that. All right. We need the three-fourths cup of milk. Let me just check myself. Yes, I'm right. And once again, I'm going to get down here to the level of the cup. And bing, we're and good. The whole milk you're using? Yes, I'm using whole milk, but I'll what be would honest. Happen, what would happen if you use skim milk? Nothing. Okay. When I practiced at home, mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't drink skim milk at home all the time. So, it would work. Yes, okay. I bought this just for us for today. Oh, okay. And we need one teaspoon of vanilla. Now, a little trick with measuring liquids. Never measure over your intended bowl because if you mess up, you won't know how much you really have mm -hmm. spilled in there. So I always get another container that I've used. This is gonna work out just fine. And you hold the bottle that you need to measure in the hand you write with, because you have much more control there. And I'm going to slowly pour my teaspoon in. Whoops, I spilled, but clean up as much. You're not so bad. cautious. <laughs> it's almost like a chemist. I guess Maybe this in is my chemistry. It is kind of chemistry. It is chemistry. It's science. Yes. Family and consumer sciences. That's right. All right. And I'm going to go ahead and I've beat those three ingredients together: the egg, the milk, and the vanilla. And you've made the well. And I've made the well, and pour into the dry ingredients and mix well. My favorite thing to mix with is a wooden spoon. All right. So like anyone you'd like is fine. I'm going to go ahead and just stir and mix this in. Now, the, the oven needs to be preheated. Yes. To 350 50. degrees. All right. And oh, I see. ready to go. You all right? Okay. Bake. Oh, this is, mm -hmm. yeah, press the bake button and arrow. It should come up to 350. Okay. Press bake again so it clicks. We're good. Yeah. Pop. There, there we, we go. Are. Hit bake Very again. Good. Hit bake again and it'll come on. And I'll check to make sure nothing is in there. Okay. Okay. It looks good. Okay. And I'm going to scrape here along the edges and get all of this nice floury mixture incorporated without beating too hard because I don't want this to get tough. Very good. And when I scrape at the bottom, I don't see if there's a little bit of flour there. I need to do a little more stirring. Mm. Doesn't it yes, smell I wonderful? See a few little lumps. Lumps but are that's good. Okay. Lumps are good. All right. All right. And we're supposed to pat this into an eight by eight grease cake dish. So here is my eight by eight. And we can spray, spray a little pan. That if will it says work. Grease. If that's okay. Right. My theory is, oh, and I have the illustration right underneath me here to show you. If you're going to cover the surface completely, then a spray release is okay. If you are not, give me one second here. What, what are you doing? Oh. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. If you make cookies and you are not going to cover it, yes. this is what happens to your pan. Oh. And I have made this mistake with brand new pans once, and my partner, who was Debbie Furness, who was an Upper St. Mm -hmm. Clair resident, moved away. She and I spent two hours getting all of the cookie sheets clean oh. at our job when we work together. Mm -hmm. So my rule is, if you're going to cover it completely as we are now, go ahead and use the, the spray. spray. If not, 
get the Crisco out and okay. lightly grease it with the Crisco. Right. That's a, a very good tip. Right. And I have saved that one because I mm -hmm. found it here when I came. I here. have a few pans at home that look like that. Right. Uh, we're going to get a rubber scraper and scrape the rest of this into my pan. In the meantime, Sandy. Yes. Would you mind melting this? Okay. Little cup of butter right here. Right. It is a half one a cup. third. It's a one third a one cup. Third. Mm -hmm. And okay. wait, wait, wait. I'm going to oh. ask you to cover it with a piece of wax oh. paper. All right. Because you don't want to clean it's my splattered. microwave, and no. neither do no. I. My gosh, you're so particular. No. I think that's wonderful. Well, actually, when you were talking about my room, I do have four complete kitchens here, and it's hard enough. Whoops. Hard enough to keep one kitchen clean, yet alone four. So I pass all my little pet peeves along to everybody who comes in here. And one of those pet peeves is even dry my sink. <laughs> but we're not going to go into cleaning today, oh, so that's well, okay. I, no. Those are good habits yes. to learn. I hope I hope they continue them at, when they go home. I, right. That would be nice to hear. All right. Now this batter is a little thick. It's not going by itself to mm -hmm. all the corners. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go ahead and help it okay. with my rubber scraper. I suppose we could use a glass pan like that? Yes, we could. That would be all right? That okay. would be fine, too. OK. I'm trying to think if I have glass ones here. I don't think I do. All right, and let mm -hmm. me get all of this out of our way. Mm -hmm. Good. Very good. And the butter's almost done, I think. That's good. The next step is to actually pour the melted butter right over the batter. And then we are going to sprinkle brown sugar. I'll be right back. Mm -hmm. And cinnamon on top of that. Okay. And this is a light brown sugar. This is a light brown sugar. The breadcrumb in there. Mm -hmm. And I love to measure brown sugar. I have in my brown sugar a piece of bread to keep it soft. And if your brown sugar ever turns into a rock, you can save it by putting in a fresh piece of bread and then putting it in an airtight container and waiting about 48 hours and the brown sugar will come back. Well, that's a good tip. So yes. you wouldn't lose it. You, you won't don't lose have it. You to throw it out. You just need time. I think I did a good job with melting the butter oh, you and did. the microwave oven. Very good. And you can it's just go spotless. ahead and pour that right on top. All over? All over. It'll just kind of flow. Okay. Yep. No problem. Oh, it doesn't sink in. No. no. That kind of floats. Oh, boy. Oh, I bet this is going to be mm -hmm. wonderful. Look at that. Looks great. Good. Now, I have filled my measuring cup over full. And I'm going to move you over here. Good. I don't have to do the choppy smoothie thing because I did pack this down. But I am going to just smoothie it, mm -hmm. not choppy it. Mm -hmm. And I tell my students the test is if it comes out like a sandcastle. Maintains its form. Yes, Good we're job. in good shape. Good job. So I'm just going to take my sandcastle and sprinkle it Rumble. right over the butter. Na, 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 na. Does that look great? Mm-hmm. Oh, and don't be afraid, good. you know, even if it starts to have some butter mm -hmm. on the brown sugar, to move it around mm -hmm. and sprinkle it evenly. Mm. And then we just need to shake some cinnamon on top. My hands are really okay. messy. Do you mind doing that? No, and I'll run all. over and wash. Lightly or? I'll go a little just, generous. Okay. I like cinnamon. All right. I'll do my best. I'm sure it'll be fine. Oh, it looks wonderful. Good. This will smell good cooking. Baby. Yes. There we go. So we're going to pop easy. that in the oven. And the recipe said 20 to 30 minutes. I'll be honest, it took 38 minutes for mine to be okay. done. And to test it, you want to get a toothpick and poke the middle, and the toothpick needs to come out clean. Okay. So All we'll right. be right back then to make our final product. The All strawberry right. shake. The wake-up wake up shake. shake. Good. We're back. And... It's tomorrow. It's tomorrow. I think the strata has come out of the oven. Yes. The cake has been baked. Yes. And now we're going to do a strawberry cheesecake wake up shake. And it's in the brunch and bread section. It's the first recipe. And it's Deborah Waller's recipe. And she has Kim in 11th grade this year Good. at the high school. 
and Deborah's the fire marshal, I believe, in Upper St. Clair. Oh, very nice. Um, but she also submitted a lot of recipes, and they've right. been wonderful. She was very generous in contributing, too. So we're anxious to check this out. Okay. It sounds good. Here we go. We're going to make this drink in a blender, and my philosophy is to keep the blender off the electric base until you're ready to blend. That way, if you miss and spill, you don't have to worry about wiping up okay. all around all these little intricate buttons. So this recipe calls for one half cup of cottage cheese right into the blender container. Did it matter whether it was small curd, large yeah. curd? I um, think the curd part on cottage cheese is basically a texture preference. Okay. I like the small curd. Mm -hmm. I don't like the large okay. curd in my mouth, but that's okay. just me. Okay. And we're going to blend it all up, so I don't think it it'll make matter. that big of a difference. No. We need a half a cup of skim milk. Okay. I think that's a 2% milk, but, but that that's, might make it a little better. Right. Maybe we were trying to be diet conscious whenever we did the recipe. Yes, because we were using low-fat cottage mm -hmm. cheese, too. But this is for a special occasion, so we're going to go ahead and ham it up. Some sugar. One-fourth cup of sugar. And then we need one teaspoon of vanilla. And I'm going to go ahead and I need a bigger target. I'll use that as my target okay. in case I spill. And not in case for when, because I always spill Darn a drop. Good. There we go. That wasn't bad. No, not at all. We need, here we go. I always lid this because mm -hmm. I've watched so many of my students spill Knock the vanilla. Over. Absolutely. Easy to do. And then 12 frozen strawberries. We'll go ahead and plop that right in here. And she has a note on the recipe that it's important to use frozen strawberries. They are frozen. <laughs> it's like I a, think it makes it thicker right? and, and it colder. Right, and it probably gives it that shaky texture, mm -hmm. you know, milk shaky texture. Okay, and it just says process. Place that it out in the blender process. So we'll go ahead and place it right in here and, and we'll start up. with blend. And check and see what's going along. Oh, oh look. Is that thick. Isn't that, that nice? That does look like a milkshake. And it smells like a cheesecake. How wonderful. Oh, I think we're in good shape. Yes. This is going to be a favorite. Right. Just a little note. There's also one teaspoon of toasted wheat germ or favorite cereal to put on top. I'm thinking that if this was your wake up shake and this was all you were going to do for breakfast, if you put the mm -hmm. wheat germ or cereal on it, you'd have your protein with your cottage cheese, your milk, your fruit. And it's a grab-and-go kind of breakfast. Right. Easy. So An easy morning shake. Right. So we'll be back in a minute to present our final brunch. Okay. Let's All go right. for it. We're back, and we have um, assembled, I think, a lovely breakfast tray. Wouldn't this be terrific in the morning? Oh, I would be crying. I would be so happy. <laughs> well, we have Estrada, some fruit garnish, cantaloupe and kiwi, mm -hmm. and the uh, cinnamon fluff cake, mm -hmm. the wake-up shake, which is terrific. It is mm -hmm. really special. Garnished with a strawberry, a cup of tea or coffee, and, and? Um, maybe a cookbook. Right. A flavors Something cookbook. To read. It's available at um, the school district central office, and Mrs. Kreiner has them here at Boyce All at right. 1605. That's $15 plus tax. And we're ready. Yes. I just want to say you could take this if you wanted to have a brunch and have people go through a serving line and put the 9 by 13 casserole in a pretty basket or on a warming tray and arrange the little fluff on a platter in special paper cups. You could have the drink in little cups or a pitcher ready to pour and coffee and we're ready mm -hmm. to go. It's great. So. Yes. 
Well, enjoy. Enjoy. And thanks yes. so much for Thank for you for being here. It was so I'm, fun. I'm sure you will have you back. I would um, love to come we, back. We love your kitchen, and thanks so much again to the school district for uh, permitting us to use the the boys' kitchen. Absolutely. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Tune Take in care. again. Happy eating. <laughs>